You know, I have to respond to this. Because, Liz, if you remember, I used to make fun of you all the time for your Jew fro and your premature grave. Because I'm a true racist. I can tell the difference. I'm actually Jewish. No one knew it, did you? <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. I used to make fun of you for it. <laughs> you remember, I'm the one of the only people that knew. And a little bit of a post-editing interjection here before anyone takes me out of context or gets it twisted. I actually love Isabel Seren's hairstyle and how her hair looks and the, the, the wavy, uh, premature gray. But I've made fun of her several times saying that Jufro, though, because uh, the Jufro is actually a real thing. And another example is if you look at Ethan from H3H3 Productions... He's got, you know, this is a male version, but he's got the kind of wavy hair, the curly hair, and uh, there's a prime example right there, and the l little bit of the, the peppering and premature gray going on, and, uh, you know, I think she rocks it pretty good, so wasn't being malicious when I would say that. It was kind of a, a compliment, um, but that's, I, I wanted to touch into that a little more because I've noticed, especially since I went over to BitChute, and I'm on my iPad right now, if the uh, format and the audio seems a little different, um, over on BitChute, there is a lot of people, you know, that one minute they'll, they'll post all this anti-Semitic stuff, and then they'll post a video of Ben Shapiro, and... <laughs> You know, I'm like, you know that person's not white, right? Like, you're all anti-Semitic, like, legit anti-Semitism. The whole Israel-Palestine thing, I don't even know if, in a lot of ways, if that is anti-Semitism or just, like, humanitarian rights violations. But, again, I'm not going to get into the whole situation with that. Um... I think war is hell, and uh, it's terrible that that's happening in the Middle East, but the, the Middle East is the Middle East. Um, I'm not, I'm not going to get into it here, but, um, you know, I, I find it funny that before even that was going on, you would see a lot of it on alternative sites, uh, like Rumble and BitChute and, was it Gab? I can't, I can't remember all the alternative sites. Uh, but BitChute specifically, there was some people that I used to follow because I'm into to like the tinfoil hat conspiracy stuff, right? And uh, I used to follow these guys and, you know, for the most part, they would do tinfoil hat conspiracy stuff, but then they would get on the, the naming the Jew thing, which I do believe there's some stuff, truth to Zionism, but... Um, the the funny thing about it is they would sit there and they would be, you know, it's the Jews, it's the Jews, the Jews control everything, blame the Jew, da 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 da, da name the Jew. And then they would turn around and they would, like, post content creators that were conservative that they agreed with, or whatever, that were, they looked white, but, you know, they were if you just do an ounce of research, you know the people... Uh, that they were retweeting and reposting and stuff were actually, you know, Jewish. <laughs> so the the whole situation is a bit screwed up, in my opinion. But I just wanted to clear that up about the Jew fro. Um, because, yeah, I've been labeled anti-Semitic. And again, like I said, Isabel Seren, I'm going to drop names. I'm, I'm going to drop names, H3H3, Isabel Sharon, um, Gyro, I'm not going to use his screen name, but Calvin, Angelica, uh, had a lot of people that I associated with and worked with that were the Jews, and uh, for, you know, one of the reasons me getting deplatformed off of <laughs> script. <laughs> Off of YouTube uh, for that. <clears throat> See, th this is why I make bad jokes. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of weird, isn't it, Liz, if you're listening, how that all works. Because, again, I I I dealt with all of this uh, misinformation and bullcrap way back in 2016. 
Like if you were a Trump supporter and a conservative or you had a southern accent like me, you were a neo-Nazi. Nobody said anything about that. You know, first they came for this person, then they came for that person, then they came for that person, then there was nobody left when they came for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um... But it sucks. The whole situation sucks. I had an association with a lot of people that were, you know, naming the Jew here were Jewish, but I make bad jokes and I got deplatformed for being anti Semitic. Uh, true story. Also transphobic and homophobic and um, a Nazi and uh, everything else. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Shil DeFranco. But let's get on with this a little more because uh, Liz. Um, I'm Jewish. I was due to go out to Palestine on the 23rd of November. Yeah, and also, Liz, if you remember, remember the 23rd, remember, remember the 4th of November, um, <clears throat> we had a little conversation about this, and I'm like, have fun getting uh, uh, beheaded. <laughs> like, I was like, you shouldn't go right now. And uh, you're like, no, you're just over-exaggerating. No, it's going to be fine. No, no, nothing's going on. No, no it'll be okay. No, I'm going to go. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> you really want to go over there. Right now in the Middle East. And look what happened. I mean, I, I would I hate to say I hate to tell you that I, I told you so. Uh, but I'm, I'm the, actually the type of person that loves telling people I told you so. Just like with the clown house situation. Nobody wanted to believe me on that either. See, I'm like a few steps ahead <laughs> of your average bear. I'm a little bit smarter. I, I know I've got the southern accent. I act all sort of derpy and stuff at times. But listen, listen, there's a lot going on in this noggin. It got cancelled as part of a delegation. Yes, I was going out there to see for myself the things that are going on. And... Um, all I seem to get is anti-Semitism. The minute I mention in a comment, please don't say... Oh, yeah, and Angelica, she's also Jewish. I just remember that. But anyway, the, the, the situation, it's a touchy topic that I'm not going to get on here <clears throat> with this because I used to do commentary, folks, and political stuff and conspiracy and tinfoil has stuff and trolling and commentary and all that. I was part of the commentary community. I was actually, uh, hard as it is to believe... Some of my videos were getting like a quarter of a million views, uh, 10, 50,000 views. I didn't have a lot of subscriber count, but I, I got a lot of views for some reason. I took an Art Bell <clears throat> approach to that stuff. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I just, YouTube had its purge and everything else. And I was one of the many people to uh, get whisk away in that wave um so i, I really don't want to talk about politics because in a, in a way things more things change the more they stay the same uh i will say this much though me personally i make a distinct i, I think the whole the whole of mental the, the whole situation in all of the middle east is kind of screwed up that's an understatement. Um, I mean, that's where Armageddon is supposed to happen. I mean, even if you look in the Hebrew text, in the Islamic text, and in the Christian text, even even like the scriptures say that that place is screwed up and always will be. And that's pretty much my stance on it. Um, and there's not much, even if you had went on your delegation, and I know you're, you know, you're feeling. Not so good about the situation. I know, like, the personal stuff is going on, and it, that sucks, and it's lame. Like I said, imagine me getting called, you know, anti-Semitic and, and transphobic and a Nazi and er everything else back when Trump was in office. You know, I mean, I went through all this back in 2016. <clears throat> Joined the club. Yeah, I can relate. You know, there's two sides to the coin on that. Uh, but I guess my point is, first of all, I make a, a lot of inappropriate jokes because, again, I was part of the commentary community, and uh, don't take that too seriously. Secondly, I tend to judge people 
on an individual basis. And I do make an extreme distinction between nation states and people. That's that's my uh, line on that. And I could get really into the whole subject of Zionism and everything else and the history of the whole situation and Albert Pike and go way, way down a rabbit hole, as you know. Uh, but I won't because I'll just get myself banned, deplatformed and taken out of context and uh, everything else. I literally just posted a video a while back uh, for my friends and relatives to, to kind of get a, a feeling of the situation of what's going on because they know what's going on. Uh, about my grandfather and I had so many people in the comments taking that out of context that I just went ahead and, and uh, put it on private you know because you have randoms that come in and they don't have a clue uh, the background situation on a lot of stuff or where you're coming from or, or who you are or, or you know you just want to leave a comment and that's fine I understand was it, it's just kind of annoying too. So I'm not. I'm not going to touch on it. I'm not going to touch on it, Liz. Not here, at least. I am thinking about bringing the monster back, though. I'm thinking about bringing the monster back. Um, just to get some of my own frustrations out. Anyway, I'm going to go watch the rest of your video. But yeah, I knew. I knew. <laughs> I knew. Don't do this. Oh, nobody knew I was Jewish. I have gray hair and gray curly Jew hair. No, I knew, Liz. I made fun of you for it. I joked about it all the time. If you remember, you actually censored some of my comments because you didn't want other people to know at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, told you so about the whole Middle East thing. That sucks, too. Hope you get to feeling better on 2024, though. I have a feeling that 2024 is going, like I'm going back into my old narration days where I used to just ramble and talk about stuff. Get that lovely radio voice ready. And here we go. What do you say? What do you know? Welcome back to the blank, 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 fill in the blanks. Can't say. Well, I'm incognito now. Uh, but yeah. <clears throat> I think 2024 is going to be a interesting year. And like I said, I'm thinking about bringing the monster back and thinking about getting it back in the commentary and just going balls to the walls like uh, our other British troublemaker that you know. I'm not going to dead name anything or anyone. <laughs> um, and just give no fucks. But I, I don't know. Just have some fun with it for, for mental health sake. But back to the talking about how 2024 is going to be in 2027. And I sent you an email about this. Um, I have noticed, and maybe some other people will notice this trend or uh, pattern too, is years between like the, the end in four to seven, and in between those years, usually exciting stuff happens. Like 1944 to 1945, the end of World War II, Hiroshima, all that good stuff. Then you have like 19, what was it, 1954, 1957. You had everything from the space race uh, to, to Spunknik and the Vietnam War uh, kicking off. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. That happened from 64 to 67, but I guarantee there probably something was going on then, probably the Civil Rights Movement or something. I haven't went back and uh, double-checked that. But then you have like 73, 74 to 77, you have, you know, the oil crisis starting up and uh, the, the economic changes in, like, the, the country in the United States at least. Uh, car culture is changing. You see in the United States because of the oil crisis, which technically started in 73, but was really hitting people hard like in, in 74. That's when stuff started, all the regulations and stuff started coming in. A lot changed then. Um, then you get into the 80s, like 84 to 87. It's just like pop culture everywhere. 
you look at some of the, 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 the craziest movies and the pop culture and the music that came out of the 80s, it was from like 1984 to 1987. Then you get into the 1990s, and you're like in 1994 to 1997. You've got Windows 95 coming out. You've got the PlayStation coming out. You've got a whole new revolution in gaming and the internet. And then you move on to the 2000s, 2004. Everybody remembers uh, World of Warcraft and the MMOs. And, you know, it gets on to like 2007, 2008. That's when the Occupy Wall Street movement comes on and, you know, so forth, so forth, and so forth. Um, I believe 2024 to 2027 it's going to be a roller coaster ride. I'm going to go off on a limb here because I'm really good at predicting things. Uh, <laughs> at least Liz knows I am. Um, and I'm, I'm going to say that, you know, these are going to be hard times, but they're going to be some of the best times. It's going to be like the 1980s all over again. Uh, in fact, I was watching a video on Reaganomics. And again, I'm going back into my old narration and commentary mode here. Sorry, folks. But I was watching a video on Reaganomics. And um, it was some lawyer lady. Miller, I think was her name. I'm not sure off the top of my head. I have to go back and check. Just randomly came across the video because I was thinking of, of Bidenomics. I was like, wow, Bidenomics kind of reminds me of Reaganomics. Everybody's like, oh, Democrats suck. But I remember this happening back in the 80s with like the Republicans too. You know, trickle down economics, just, you know, <laughs> getting pissed on. That's what trickle down economics feels like. And again, another post that an in interjection here. Uh, yes, I know that Reaganomics and Bidenomics are the total reverse of each other. Bidenomics is supposed to be a uh, relief to the poor and middle class and growing the economy from the bottom up. And Reaganomics was relief, relief to the uh, upper classes and growing the economy from the top down. But in both situations, it's, it's artificial meddling by the federal government in the economy. No matter how how you look at it from top down, conservative Ronald Reagan or bottom up Joe Biden, uh, liberal, it's still government meddling and stuff. Ronald Reagan put a bunch of tax cuts on the wealthy back in the 80s with the theory that all this wealth would uh, trickle down and it would benefit everybody. Like you put all these tax cuts uh, on all these wealthy rich people, you know, it'll help the poor people too somehow because it'll trickle down to the poor. And um, they just hoarded everything and kept it to themselves. And the poor got poorer and the rich got richer. Uh, but the bottom line is whether it's Bidenomics, Reaganomics, it's still the government uh, meddling in places that they shouldn't meddle in places and sc screwing everything up. And again, it feels like the 1980s all over again to me. And I was looking at the people, the way she started the video off, she had Reagan saying, make America great again, right? And then she cut to a clip, and there is Donald Trump doing the same thing, make America great again. I'm like, wait a minute. And then she did a clip of the AIDS epidemic with, guess who? Dr. Fauci back in the 80s was there for the AIDS epidemic. And then she took a modern clip of, guess who? Dr. Fauci with the, the current pandemic. And I'm like, wow. This is like the 1980s reboot. 2.0 all over again. It's like 1984 all over again. And uh, I don't know if anybody else has noticed that or felt that vibe, but yeah, it's like the, the, the 2020s right now is going to be similar to, in my opinion, which amounts to nothing on the internet, the 1980s and 1990s. It's just something I've noticed. It's just a prediction. 
I've uh, been pretty good at predicting stuff thus far, <laughs> uh, but we'll wait and see. Until then, all I can say, folks, is uh, hold on to your hats. Take care. Thanks for watching. And if you've figured it out yet, bye bye. <clears throat> oh man, I'm, my voice cracked on that. Let me try again. <clears throat> it's been such a long time. Bye bye.